In this video, we'll talk about covariance and correlation. And then we'll talk about the variance of sums of random variables. So this is the definition of covariance. Um, if, x and, if x is greater than its average, and y is greater than its average, then we get a, a positive term times a positive term, which is positive. If x is below its mean and y is below its mean, then we get a negative times a negative, which is also positive. And if there are opposite signs, so if x is less than its mean but y is greater, then we'll get a negative term. And if uh, the opposite holds, it's also negative. So covariance is positive when x and y are generally both above or below their means, and negative if they're opposites. That is, covariance is positive in general when increasing one variable leads to an increase in the other, and negative when increasing one decreases the other. Here is a proof that covariance of xy is equal to e of xy minus e of x times e of y, which is just algebra. So this is the more useful formula. Um, note that covariance can be negative, unlike variance. So covariance satisfies the following properties. So if x and y are independent, then the covariance is 0. Because earlier we proved that uh, if x and y are independent, then the expected value of the product is the product of the expected values, which is equal to this. So you'll actually get a 0 here if they're independent. The covariance of x and x, well, you get e of x squared minus e of x times e of x, which is just the variance of x. The covariance of x and y is the same as covariance of y and x because um, it's just switching the order of multiplication. The covariance of ax plus by with the random variable z is a times the covariance of xz plus b times the covariance of yz. And the way I like to remember this is it works just like the distributive property for sums. So ax plus by times z is the same as a times xz plus b times yz, where these represent like covariances instead. The variance of x plus y in general is the variance of x plus the variance of y plus 2 times the covariance of x and y. And because, and hence, if x and y are independent, the covariance is 0, right? So this term goes away, and you just get variance of x plus variance of y, which is what we uh, used earlier. And this messy thing just says the covariance of a sum with another sum is just the double sum of the covariance of each pair. That is, covariance works like FOIL. So basically, it says uh, if you have a plus b plus c and times d plus e, you just get every single possible pair here. And it works like that. OK, so now correlation. The correlation of x and y is denoted rho of x and y. And it's the covariance divided by the square root of the variances. And um, by in some linear algebra, you learn that cauchy schwarz inequality, which is not important. It, it proves that the correlation is always between negative 1 and 1. That is, it's just a normalized version of covariance. And most notably, the correlation is plus or minus 1 exactly when, if and only if, uh, y is a perfect linear function of x, and the sine of rho will be the same as the sine of a. In linear regression or line fitting, you may have done high school science class, you'll have computed r squared, which is always between 0 and 1. And that r squared is actually just rho squared. Um, and it measures how well a linear relationship exists between x and y. And an our interpreted interpretation is that r squared is the percentage of variance in y, which can be explained by variation in x. So let's do some see some correlations. So for this plot, the correlation is negative 1. There's a perfect negative linear relationship. For this one, it's a positive relationship, but it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. So maybe it's around 0.9. Here it's a positive perfect relationship, so it's plus 1. Here they look kind of independent, so the correlation will be 0. And here it's negative, but not very strong, so maybe it's like negative 0.6. Now for the variance of sums of random variables. So we have the variance of this random variable, and it actually, we can make it more complicated by saying it's the covariance of the, it with itself. And here this is just x1 plus all the way to xn, and this is also the same thing, except with a different dummy variable, but they're the same. Um, and by FOIL, we can say that this is just the covariance, the sum, the double sum of every pair. And so you can write this matrix like x1 to x5, x1 to x5, and you're going to sum every term in this matrix here. Um, so these diagonal terms are the covariance of xi with itself, which is just the variance of xi. So you have these. And everything else, you get the covariance of xi xj. Uh, let's just choose half of it. Um, and then multiply by 2, because uh, covariance of x1, x2 is the same as x2 and x1 by symmetry. So this is the general formula. And so what we're going to show here is that, uh, remember the hat check problem? We showed that the expected number of people who get their hat back is 1. It actually turns out the variance of the number of people who get their hat back is also 1. I'm going to let you follow this, because it's a bit messy algebra. But that's really cool.